Hi everyone. Sorry, it took a long time to upload this video. I finally made my workbench with construction lumber and lumber that used to be a part of my garage. And here's what I made. Of course, as usual, I made it with hand tools and it was a real long journey. Let's see how I made it. So, yeah, I started with making the base of the bench and I used 3 8 feet 4x4s and 2 8 feet 2x4s. The thing was, is it because of the season? It was so hard to find kiln dried construction lumber and I picked up only decent grain ones. So, yeah, I went to so many big box stores only to get these. And then, I roughly dimensioned them. I put camellia oil on the body of the hand plane, so the plane runs smoothly and to protect the hand plane from the moisture as I sprayed water on not to soften. Ah, I should've cut the lumber to the lengths I need to begin with since both ends will anyway have tenons. 4x4 is big to me and that could've saved a lot of time. Moving on to cutting the joints, I first used the drill to get rid of the major waste and then chisel to clean the mortise. It's still the beginning of the project, but I realized this isn't the woodworking I usually do on the desk, but it's really physically exhausting. My arms are pretty much dead after cutting 16 mortises on 4x4s. I then cut the tenons. I think this was the first one and I realized I got be as accurate as possible on saw cutting or removing the leftover takes me forever. In addition, it's a long tenon so I paid extra attention to be sure the tenon is square. For the joints of the post to the basis, I tried Japanese Komisen style, which is basically a drawbar but a square shape. I put this mortise on the tenon 130 seconds closer to the shoulder side than one on the other piece. So when I put the pin, it will tighten up the joint. Simply, I suck at using a hand drill, so this square shape is easier for me to align the location. Oh well, it's a long way to cut all the joints and now I do a half lap dovetail with a shoulder which I believe it's called Koshikage Ali. It's at least a smaller joint so it was a quick job but again I cut 8 of them. I think it's overkill strength wise but I took this as a good opportunity to learn more of woodworking. For the tenons, like I said, they are only on 2x4s, so it was much easier and by this time, I kind of felt my saw cutting accuracy was improved. So, I can cut few slices away of the marking line even when cutting diagonally. Anyways, I did some powerings and that's it for all the joints of the base. Now I need to make pins and wedges for the joints. Pins are easy that I just make half an inch square dowels by using my favorite jig. For the wedges, it was going to be quick as I made a jig but it wasn't going as I planned. This is the jig and I thought I just needed to pull the hand plane from the apex side of the wedge. But it's like doing a hand plane from the end grain and going against the grain which is extremely tough. So I ended up doing a hand plane from the sideways. Oh and yeah, I made them with African mahogany but I didn't have enough of them so the rest are red oak and I know they are not doing well for outdoor furniture but it's okay. 
Anyways, after cleaning up the surface and chamfering all the pieces, now it's time to assemble the base. I really need a big mallet like 5 to 10 pounds for this size of the joints, but somehow I managed to fit them. Then, here is the Komi-sen style. You'll see the glue squeeze from the joint and it really helps me to have a tight fit joint. This one is the half lap dovetail. I cut the part of mortise bigger than the tenon intentionally like the picture, so the dovetail can pull the joint tighter, but it seemed like it closed all the way. Here's the next day. I cut off excess parts of the joint, and I decided to try Japanese traditional wood protection called kakishibu. It's just juice of fermented persimmon. What's good about it is, it's rich in tanning and protects wood from bacteria and fungi that it's almost like the bark of a tree. The one I use is odor free, but it usually has a strong smell until it dries. Anyways, the one I got says it's for an interior use, but since the ingredient was just pure parsimon tanning, I just used it. I did total of 3 coats and I waited one day between every coat. I then put tea coil twice to finish the base. Moving on to the bottom of the workbench, I used leftover material from my bench project two years ago. These were actually IKEA bed slats. Yeah, it's been already two years since I started playing with wood. Oh, and around this time, I posted the comment on YouTube that I can't find kiln dry Douglas fir construction lumber. I wanted 2x10 for the top, but there were not even 2x6, 2x8, and 2x12s. All of them were green, and I had to stop the project here. After one week of looking for it, I gave up and I went to a local lumber store to get 8 quarters vertical grain Douglas fir, but it was over budget, so I ended up buying the portion that can only cover about 2 thirds of my workbench. Okay, so this is the lumber I got and after cutting it, I roughly dimensioned one side so I can use it as a reference to join the two balls. I was actually thinking to spend a little more to get mahogany for the bench top, but Douglas Fire is really fun to play with and I'm already liking it. Anyways, now I'm dimensioning it to the size I want so I can cut the joints, but before cutting the joints, let me quickly show you my tool well build since this top board doesn't have enough coverage due to the budget constraints. So this was also Douglas fir that used to be a part of my garage, and I quickly cut them in the length and width I wanted. If I knew I needed this tool well, I could've done this process when making the base, but oh well, things always don't go as easy as I planned, but this is just a box, so it won't be too much. And this is my favorite box joint. I really like this joint for the quickness of the fabrication and its look. I used the cedar fence pickets for the bottom of the box that was the leftover material from a sharpening stone case project, and I cut rabbits only on the longer size of the box. Since I don't have an over 40 inch clamp, it was hard to glue up, but it was good enough. If you are interested in what I pay attention to when making a box joint, please let me know. 
There are several tips and I can summarize them like how I did for other tips in my past videos. Ok, so let's do the final fabrication which is the joint of the bench top. I decided to do a type of a sliding dovetail. It's like a keyhole mount but the dovetail shape. This is the hand plane that I glued a reference block so I can roughly shape this border tail shape. It's not that accurate jig so I finalized it by freehand. Then I cut them into about 2 inches and made holes for the dowels. Since the base is already finished, I used epoxy to place them on the base. Now I cut the mortises. I'm using the same reference block to cut out the mortise. For this side, the tail will slide in from the outside of the board, so it's simple, but it's cut out 3 eighths of an inch longer than the tail length, so the wood can expand too. For the other side, the tail will go in from the square shaped mortise and slide to the connected mortise, which is a dovetail shape to lock it in place. You'll see how it goes. Finally, I can put the top on the base. I was kind of scared if the joints are misaligned and I messed it up, but luckily all six of the tails went in. I didn't glue them to the top board at all so I put two stoppers on the front side of the top board. In this way, the front side of the bench top is flush to the base while the bench top has expansion and contraction. Then, I put the tool wheel and did the final adjustment of the bench top. It's really fun to do a hand plane when the project is almost ending. And this is the real final process. I made some dog holes. Actually, these are the marking failure. There is supporting wood underneath so I can't make some holes that I marked. I never fail to make a stupid mistake like this. Anyways, after this, I put teak oil on top and here's the final product. I don't know if I like the color combination as a garden furniture, but I like this color by itself. It was easy to stain evenly, even where the knots are, but there are some glue spots. It's anyway built from recycled material and some construction lumber, so I don't really mind. Oh, here I purposely put this damaged part in front so someone in the future may wonder how the previous owner used this bench, if this bench lasts that long. But as of now, most importantly, this is solid enough so I hope it lasts at least a few years. For the base of the base, I put RV parts on rubber coated concrete blocks for better stability. If you wonder how I'm gonna use this workbench function wise, you gotta see my future videos, so you'll know if this workbench is a failure. And I guess that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I would be happy if you liked the video and happier if you subscribe to this channel. If you have any suggestion to my video, it's also welcome. See you!